Hi, Tim with Afterlater Audio. Today we're gonna look at a bunch of different utility modules. I didn't need to do this thing with my face. Let's just, let's just look at modules. When you're first starting out in modular, utilities are not very exciting. But something kept happening. I kept hearing all these really experienced synthesis that I looked up to talk about how important utilities were. And every time I, you know, did research on them, I was like, that's kind of boring. I want something that makes sounds and effects and stuff. But, you know, five years later into my modular journey, I am one of those people now. I am all about utilities. So if you're new to modular, I'm hoping that this video can kind of show you a bunch of different utilities and how to use them in a real world scenario. So you don't have to slowly learn this over five years like I did. One thing I also want to note just while we're looking at this unpatched is, uh, well, let me ask you, how many, how many VCAs do you think are in this case? Spoiler alert, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And as Mylor Melodies uh, said ages ago, and I think it's the most quoted thing I ever hear when I'm talking about uh, modular with someone, is uh, you can never have too many VCAs. So this video is also just to kind of highlight not only the cool, uh, functionality that we have within our utility line, but also just how many of our modules have VCAs built into them that um, you can actually just use independently of their other functions. So yeah, hopefully I can uh, convert you all to the the cult of utilities. Um, let's dive in. Okay, so here's Flip. Flip is a 1U module based off of immutable instruments branches. Um, basically what it does is it takes an incoming gate or trigger and uh, routes it to one of the two outputs based on a coin toss. So let's just get a, a steady clock going in there. It has a few modes as well. Two channels. If there's nothing plugged into the input of channel B, this is normaled over here. So as you can see, I've got both of these knobs. These are the probability knobs. Turn all the way to the right. This is the, the standard mode. You can see that just the green uh, button, or just the green LED is flashing. That means we're just passing this straight through, this, this gate signal from Pachinko. If I turn this to the, uh, the noon position, now we have like a, a fair coin toss of whether the gate is being passed from the A and B, the A or B, um, and then of course there's CV control over that, so that's pretty fun. I like to use a, uh, a bipolar source, because then if you start from noon, it can move it back and forth here. There are a few different modes. So there is a toggle mode, and then there is a latching mode. So you can just press the, uh, the button here to go into uh, toggle mode. And then even in toggle mode, you can see if I have the knob all the way up, there's still alternation. So it's just a, a different set of probabilities for the heads or tails outcome. And then you can hold the B button down here, and that actually turns it into a single channel as far as inputs go, but uh, you can notice that these are uh, these LEDs on the B side are staying lit. So it's basically um, leaving the gate high, um, either a positive five voltage coming out of A or B. Um, so it's super useful, but why don't we see it in a patch so we can really wrap our head around it? If you've watched our video on Pachinko or know anything about Pachinko, um, in the red mode here up at the top, it's it's a really good uh, drum sequencer. So you can just um, set up your, what I like to do is do a kick and a snare on triggers one and three, and then uh, do your hi-hats out of two. But two is just the master clock. So there's not gonna be like a rhythm to it. So you can hear this is, it's a cool beat, but there's, there's no variation in it. It's very straightforward. Um, so what I like to do, Let's plug that trigger into here. And then I'm actually going, yeah, I'm going to clock uh, steps with it because that's going to come in later. So let's plug in our, just our A output here from flip into our gate input for our hi-hat voice coming out of Adam. So as you can probably tell that you're only getting it uh, every once in a while you can see it's flashing between green and red so basically what's happening here is you're putting your uh, your gate signal into the in um, and then if this is at noon you kind of have a 50 50 coin toss of whether that is going to come out of the a or b if i go all the way left 
it's the same it's just passing the signal through and as I increase uh, the potentiometer value here towards noon we start getting a little bit more fair toying co coin toss toying toss coin toss for the B output and then of course if I go all the way over to the right then we uh, we don't get anything happening because it's only coming out of the B so I actually like to use some CV so I'm going to use a bipolar CV um, output from Pachinko the Y output that way I can leave the knob in the noon position and that bipolar voltage is going to basically move this back and forth uh, semi-randomly well randomly actually because it's coming from Pachinko So a little bit different, a little bit more interesting variation compared to just the 50-50 coin toss. Um, and now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to send the noise output. Um, I'm using it twice here. I'm actually sending it into the exciter input just so this hi-hat voice has a little bit more uh, character to it. But I'm also going to send it into a VCA here on Carve. And then I'm going to trigger that VCA. Hold on, let me pull this out here. I'm going to trigger that VCA with the channel B output. So now we've got a couple different hi-hat type voices happening here. Um, and the CV is changing between those. And to take things even further, what I'm going to do is you'll probably notice that the second side here, this is a dual channel. If you don't have anything plugged into the input here, then the input from here normals here and then you can have it in a totally different configuration with a different CV source. So you're basically getting four different gate outputs based off of one, and you can control those with, um, well, here, let's, let's do this. I'm gonna start changing some of the, the, the voices here. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna send A and B out to trigger two different uh, channels on the, uh, the carve here. So you can see I have one going into the mallets input for the atom, so that's going to be changing uh, just the sound of that. And then I'm also going to take one and I'm going to put it into, I'm going to modulate the attack time of the VCA for the noise output with this, um, this envelope coming out of here. So it almost adds kind of like a swing to it, which is kind of fun. And then finally, I'm, um, like I said at the beginning, I'm clocking the steps. Uh, so this is a random uh, stepped voltage, random gate, and random pulse generator. So I'm putting the pulse out into channel four on carve. So I've got another envelope coming out of here. And what I'm gonna do um, is I'm actually gonna turn this CV value down because this is a unipolar voltage. And I'm going to control the CV for the uh, the second side of flip. So now I've got all of this variation coming out of here with just three gate signals, um, specifically the main clock signal from Pachinko, um, going in here and becoming four different signals. So flip is an awesome module for really stretching out. Um, you know, if you if you are low on gate sequencers or if you want to add some variation to just one uh, output from a gate sequencer, this thing is super, super useful.